Hi everybody, and welcome to the Astro Imaging Channel tip about making template projects. This uses the power of PixInsight with its projects function to streamline your processing. Let's face it, we repeatedly use the same scripts and processes in everything we do. Our processing programs go through these steps, one right after the other, generally with the same uh, parameters set in the process icons and so forth. It's easy enough to call each of the scripts and processes. Here's using the Process Explorer to call the automatic background extractor. That's easy enough to do. And here's a way to call the same process. If you know where it is on the menu, you can pull down on the process menu and go straight to it. If you don't know just where it is, you can pull down all processes, look it up in the list, and click on it, and there is your process just as you wanted it. But let's face it, if in fact we're repeating our scripts and processes, using the same things over and over again, with the same default parameters set in those icons and processes and scripts, why not just load them all together with the processes and parameters that we actually use? Many of us have process icon sets that we're already using. So you just go to process, process icons, load the process icons. I'm going to use the one from Warren uh, Keller. He graciously let us use that on the Astro Imaging channel. I call them up and up they pop. And we've got all the favorite icons that Warren would give us. Now, if you haven't yet gotten Warren Keller's um, action icons, you can go to the astroimagingchannel.org, click on links, and click on the appropriate link. Up will pop this page. If you're really interested in this up here, the download icon, it downloads the file to your computer. You don't have to worry too much about this part. And um, then when PixInsight is ready, it'll tell you it's, um, it'll tell you to go back to PixInsight and open up the file and you'll find all of well, Warren Keller's action items sitting there. Now you'll want to save them. So you go to process, save your process icons, and then don't put them back in the download folder. Put them someplace else, which is more appropriate so that you can find them next time you need them. Another way to do all this is what I'm advocating today. You make yourself a project. I've got a project called Alex Empty Project. And you can see that it's got a lot of icons over here that would be quite useful to you, I'm sure. It's a little hard to see it there, so I'm gonna blow it up. Here's the original looking thing, kind of small. And then here you can see that I've got my functions kind of grouped together. Um, you can see that I, I'm always using my STF, so it's right up on top, my screen transfer function, I can find it easily. First thing I do when I'm processing is I blink all the exposures from last night and check them out. Then I go into the uh, weighted batch pre-processing, and I've got two icons for that. Notice that these are scripts. You don't, you can do more than just processes. You can put in scripts also. I've got one version for my one by one bending and another version for my two by two bending. Then I generally make an LRGB combined so that I can see what it looks like and I crop from the image. And I'm not going to go through all the processing steps here, but you can see that I've kind of grouped them together. Here, for instance, uh, where is it? Over here, you can see that I put all the stuff where I mess with the curves and do the stretching and stuff like that. Here are some things that I need, but I don't really need once I start. They, they're actually called by the batch processing thing, so I put my cosmetic corrections down here. You decide how you want to do that, of course, but each of these things, I should tell you, has their own parameters built into it. You'll see how I do that a little bit later. Now, how do you actually build a template? Well, first off, you have to really think out how you do your work. This fits the way I do my work. 
how you do your work may be completely different. And so you got to figure out what projects, what, what processes you use and what order you use them in, so forth. Then to action. To start programming your own empty project, first start with a good action item set. And you can see that I've already, um, I've already incorporated Warren, so you've seen how to start that up. Then go over to your process and you pick individual items that you want to add to it. Add anything that you want that, that isn't already there. I always use resample towards the end of a program. So I pull down this new instance icon down here, right click, set the icon identifier, which means rename it. And I'm going to call this resample. OK, and poof, I've got my first one. Get rid of this because I don't need it anymore. And then I'm going to take this resample and I'm going to push it down into the corner. I also want to add cosmetic correction because I'm going to need that a little bit later. Uh, I go through, I'm not going to add the actual parameters here. This is kind of make believe. So I'm going to set the icon identifier again and put cosmetic correction and this is my one version of it because it's my one by one vinning so i'm going to tell it okay now i've got my second item and it goes on like that for a while you add whichever ones you want remember the key thing is you use this new at instance icon down here the triangle in the corner to just drag it off and start it up and rename it and then you've got your new um, uh, icons for your own use. You might also want to delete a couple that you don't use. Here's a couple that I don't use ever, so I would delete them. And you just highlight them and then you delete the selected icons. Now that you've done that, you might want to customize one of them. Here's, let's customize LRGB combo. I can tell you that every time I run this particular process, I'm going to use the same um, uh, picture names. The image names are always called the same because they, this is the default of what comes out of weighted batch B processing. So I drag these names in one by one. And the important thing here is that I am setting up the parameters for how I'm going to use this from now on. Pretty interesting, huh? So I L, R, G, B, and I've got that. Now, um, you could just minimize this and it would actually become an icon, but now you got two of them there and things like that. So you can either delete that or whatever. But um, what I like to do is, is rename this one. I got to get rid of this one before I rename it. And uh, you've seen now, from now on, it's just making up a new process icon. You've seen this several times before. Set the icon identifier to LRGB combo. Tell it OK. Close this. And everything's fine. OK, the next step is, uh, you know, you can do this with scripts also. You can't do them with all scripts because uh, they don't all have new instance icons and make it easier to do. And some of them aren't made to be used as, as scripts like that. But if they've got this new instance icon, uh, you can use it. Now, you'll notice originally they don't have any bias, flats or darks. But if I go down to add files and then go back to my calibration, last time I collected calibrations, and I collect my master biases and for that I only want the ones for the one by one binning because uh, that's that's going to be the uh, back, the batch processing for my one by ones. Then there's some other things I have to set. Uh, now you'll notice I've got my darks, my flats, my I don't have lights yet. I still don't have any lights in here, but um, I'm going to apply my cosmetic correction. Remember I made those earlier. Uh, and I always auto detect my reference frame in the first place. And then I do have to set my output directory new each time because it's a new set of files. Then I drag the new instance icon off to the side and I have to exit because when you're in uh, one of these scripts, they won't let you do anything but exit. 
change my icon identifier again so that I've got, uh, now I'm going to call this a weighted batch B processing one because it's my one by one configuration of this. Now I'm not going to go on and show you a bunch of these, but there are some that do present a problem. For instance, blink is pretty important to me, but you can't make blink by pulling over the new instance icon because blink, as you can see, has no new instance icon. So how do you handle that? You simply minimize it using this up here, minimize it, and you'll notice that it stays alive as an action item icon. You got to be a little bit special with it because it's actually a process and not just an icon now. So you minimize it and it's there. Now you're going to want to drag and drop some things. You can grab the whole set and move them around so you make room. And then think about where you want all these things. Uh, I'm going to put my cosmetic correction way out of the way down here because, frankly, I don't actually call it. The, the script calls it. I don't ever need to actually see it there, but I need it there. Resample is one of the last things I do before saving it for the web. So I put it down there. SDF is one of the first things I do. And, well, we can go on and on from this and, and you organize it however you like to organize it and stuff. Uh, the next thing I would do is generally a, a batch pre-processing, so I put it next. Then I'll do a LRGB combo probably. Um, oh, blank has to go up there before everything um, because I do that before I do weighted batch pre-processing. I make an LRGB combo and then I do a dynamic crop of all of the frames that I'm using before I do another LRGB combo to test how everything's working. So you can see that I've got this stuff back. I started, I'm not going to do it all for you because we've only got so much time. Next thing you want to do is be sure to close each of the pictures that you've got here because you're going to want to save this project once it's all set up and all cleaned up and everything the way you want. And we're not going to do all that right now. So you go to File, Save a Project. So you're going to save the project. You've got to go find out with this little box right here uh, where you want it. Put it in your imaging files. Don't put it back in, in a generic folder. You're going to be able to want to find it every time you start a, a new uh, um, Every time you start a new image, you want to start with a new blank process and you uh, get demo is what I'm calling this one. So I can erase it later when I'm finished with this project here and demo, demo empty project. And then I go ahead and save it. Now you can fill out this stuff if you want. I never do. I pretty well. I know what it is. I don't need to go too into too much detail. And now that project is saved forever and ever and ever. Uh, you can come back and change it and resave it as a new project. And every time you um, every time you finish with a image, you want to save the new project under a new name when you've actually got image data in there. But for now. Let's go to see how we would actually use that. To use your new template, you go to Load Project. You find your project that you just um, saved up. I'm going to use my empty project. And you call it up. Next thing you do is you do whatever it is that you would, you would process with. I always started with Blink. I'm not going to go through the whole process here, but you can see that's how I would start. Then I always minimize that back. Then I go to my batch pre-processing, call it up. I press this little red circle here, and you'll see that my bias, darks, flats are already in here. My uh, When I go to my lights, I would have to go ahead and load my lights by adding files. So I go, now remember, I've already selected my files and put them into a particular folder. They're in original right now. So I'm going to pick up all my one by one binnings here and I'm going to open them up and it populates the field so that I've got all my my light images here. You can see I've already got my um, correct uh, cosmetic correction already indicated. I'm going to use it and I've already have defined previously my parameters for my particular um, uh, imager. I I chose auto detect reference frame 
and I have to pick a place where I'm going to store these files when I'm done. And then I can run the diagnostics if I like, and I can tell it to run, just like you would in any other circumstance. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole processing routine here. You get the idea of how to use this. You just go through your list and, and with your parameters already defined. Now, there's some things we need to say whenever we're giving advice. One is that this vice is, advice is for me. It works for me fine. We could have a splendid argument about whether it is smarter to do separate calibration and stacking where we calibrate, align, and then integrate, or we go through the batch processing routine, which kind of does that in an automated fashion. But we don't need to do that because you can make your own project like this, and I'll be happy with my project like that. This is highly adapted to what you actually want to do. Secondly, this whole assumption is that we do the same thing over and over again, and we can only do that if we're dealing with probably the same skies with the same equipment, same exposure values, length of exposure, binning, camera temperature, uh, that our flats, darks, and biases are still good. I have an observatory where I use my equipment, and all these elements are, are true, so I don't have to worry so much about that. Things stay the same. If your things don't stay the same and you need new flats for each night, well, you're going to have to put your flats in that uh, batch pre-processing. Also, um, the default individualized parameters are always there. I know my batch pre-processing will always deliver me my frames. These are the names of the frames. They're all the time. So I don't have to put them in each time. They're always going to be the same. If I want to change my transfer functions to something I like or don't like, I just put these in as an example. I can go ahead and change them. And when I call up my project, they will be like that and not by not in their original PixInsight defaults. And there's nothing to say that you can't have multiple uh, uh, empty projects. I have a one-shot color camera, and it doesn't use the same batch pre-processing as I use. So I've got my batch pre-processing for one-shot color camera, my batch pre-processing for my two binning modes of my um, LRGB camera. So when I'm doing that, I, I, I can have two different empty projects, two of them. Well, folks, I hope you picked up some ideas here that will help you in streamlining your processing. Uh, thank you for the Astro Imaging channel for having these tips. Uh, if you liked them, please let us know. Thank you.